Okay, we're back with the Countax. This is a C300 300H. Excuse my appalling pronunciation. You may remember last time in the servicing video, uh, we noticed that we had a bit of play on this front steering joint here, and you can see it much more clearly now. So I've, I've jacked the front up, just got to be careful not to jack it up on the exhaust or on this member behind, then it's on axle stands. So it's completely off the ground, the wheels are completely off the ground. So I'm now at the stage of stripping this down so I can work out which parts are required. Obviously some bearings will be required but whether this stub axle has been damaged as well. Um, so, so that I can order the parts and get it fixed. So that's a 19mm. You might notice if you've got an eagle eye that this is a nylock nut that's on the wrong way around. Uh, not my work. Still works, I guess. I suspect those washers might be on the wrong way around as well. Anyway. Seventeen. Yeah, about a 17. Feels a bit slack, that does. Might be a slightly AF size, or might be an AF size. It doesn't feel like it actually, it doesn't feel too bad. Just a little bit loose. Uh, it's a double threaded thing, or maybe it's not. It was just stiff and full of muck. Hmm, that's pretty slack as well, isn't it? I don't know if this is one big bolt with a set of spacers, but we will soon find out. It is. Okay, just looking at that from the side, I'll, I'll have to check the other side, but that looks bent to me. Anyway, let's find out. Oh yeah, that's a better place for that. Get that clip off. If I wasn't already videoing this, I'd take a picture of the order in which they came off, but obviously I have the benefit of a video to refer back to. Whoa! Uh, I guess we can probably say the bearing's damaged then, can't we? Did you see my balls fly out? I haven't got my parts tray to hand, so I'll just put them in there. Uh, 
Okay. That is uh, probably the most damaged bearing I've seen in a good while. And we have the pleasure of the inner race still being in there. A bit of it being round here. And sadly, yeah, that's uh, we're talking new new stub axle time there. Okay, I'm going to get something to try and wedge this this front steering joint in a downward position so that when I when I try and drift out these bearings that it doesn't keep jumping up and down so I'm going to try and jam something under the tyre the other side I'm going to use a, a drift punch just in at an angle against this this race and gradually hopefully Yeah, that's moving. Just tap round. There we go. I'll be more gentle when I put the new one in, but uh, there wasn't really any need to be gentle with this because it is utterly knackered. Another ball bearing. Yeah, this one looks like it's had it as well. Not quite as bad. Just swapped over to a slightly smaller punch you probably spotted because because this bearing's actually intact my larger punch that I was using was uh, oh, it's come out now anyway was was knocking out the uh, the inner race rather than actually hitting against the outer one I know I'm using a carpentry hammer and I know I'm hitting it sideways uh, but hey you uh, you do the best with what you've got there we go. So that bearing at least is still intact, but it's got loads of play in it, so uh, so that needs doing as well. These are 62032RS, and they're the same bearings in here as they are in the wheels. So I guess uh, what that means is if you buy and if you get a good deal on a job lot of them, you may as well buy them because you'll probably need them for the wheels at some point as well. Although, as you will have seen from the service video, the wheels on this, the wheel bearings on this one are fine. I'm going to order some parts now. We need two of those. We need one of those, and then we'll put it back together. Probably be about a week's uh, wait for me because I will be ordering them online. Uh, but with you, it will be merely the blink of an eye. Finally, got some parts. I say finally because it was a bit tricky to be honest with you. So that's the arm that was taken off. It's got this uh, C-clip groove at the top here, but it turns out, based on the parts diagrams, that this tractor should not have this stub axle fitted to it at all. Um, so that threw me off the trail a little bit with finding the replacement. Anyway, we have the replacement. You'll notice it's slightly different. It doesn't have the C-clip groove, and uh, what happens, I think, what should happen is that the clamp, this clamp, Is what holds the stub axle in place and stops it dropping down should the tractor go over a bump or something like that but this one which i think is actually off a different series off an a series actually has the c-clip to do that so this part of the old arm is longer than the equivalent part on the arm that it should have but it's only longer by that amount between the c-clip groove and the attachment point for the steering arm so I think we're going to be okay to uh, refit the part that the tractor should have. Also got some bearings and some uh, some washers as well because the washers were, were pretty chewed up. 
when the, when the bearing failed, it also then started to chew up the washer. So these are 62032 RS uh, with a three quarter inch hole there. Should you be interested, I'll put the part number for this in the description. Let's get on and fit some bearings. Let's start by just clearing out the uh, the bearing mounting points. Just using some green Scotch Brite. Give it a clean out with a rag. Watch your fingers because there's a welding seam inside there, which is quite sharp in my case. I've still got the wheel on the other side chocked up. Um, usually when the tractor is being driven this would slide up and down but with the wheel on the other side chocked up this is hold, held still which is going to be really useful when we're tapping the bearings into place. Various options for doing that you can either um, use a socket and tap it with a hammer or you can use a, um, you can use a press but obviously you've got to take this out to get it to a press or you can have a use a, a sort of a portable press system or you can use a bushing and bearing puller. I'll just show you the one I've got. So this is another option for getting the bearings in. It's, it's more usually designed for rubber bushes with a metal casing around the outside, that type of thing, but a whole different series of mandrels or tubes, whatever you want to call them, a whole different series uh, of sizes so that you can just press on the outer metal part of the bearing. That looks about right. Uh, maybe that looks about right, so they're the two that I'll use. I um, think that one will be the right size for going through. The, the, these parts are good, these uh, screw thread parts are quite weak. You'll see there's one missing already because it bent in the course of being used. Uh, so obviously it's not quite as good as a hydraulic press, but situations like this where you, it's going to be quite a faff to actually take the front axle out so we can get it to a press uh, it can be another option. And you can also put the bearings in the freezer for a little while to make the metal contract. Uh, and then sometimes they'll just drop in and sometimes it's a very light tap with a hammer. I haven't had time to do that unfortunately so that's not going to be an option for me but if you do have time it can make things quite a lot simpler. So what I think I'm going to try for this top bearing is a, a combination of the two things that I described. So here's one of the uh, presses from that kit I showed you but I think I'm just going to try tapping on it with a hammer because these bearings aren't, don't seem to be super tight. You'll notice this does just contact just nicely with the outer face of the bearing. What's nice about this as well is it's just big enough to go over the housing so that it will naturally stop itself and stop you from hammering the bearing in too hard although there also is a step inside you should also stop doing that so just check that's flush all the way around it is not sure if I'll be able to do the same thing for the bottom one because the angle isn't so isn't so helpful but we'll give it a go Okay, so I'm not quite as good with a hammer upside down as they am the right way up, but those two bearings are in nice and square. Okay, so let's start reassembling. The bearings have a washer either side of them, and that puts the load just on the inner face, but still allows them to turn. So here's the new stub axle. You can probably tell it's a second-hand one. Um, I've just given it a small clean up with the scotch bright again just had a few little burrs on here that were stopping the bearing sliding over smoothly so firstly we put a new washer on
washer goes on the top. And then that's going to fall out straight away. And I'll just wedge it with the tyre to stop it doing that. On top of this, uh, there's a spacer. Thankfully, the person who sold the second-hand one to me actually gave me the spacer as well. But I was just checking; they are they are the same, new to old. So we've got a spare spacer if we need one. And then what you can see now is that has taken the point where the steering clamp goes; it's taken it exactly flush, and that's that's pressed up hard there. So that's uh, that's really spot on. It's really good because that is exactly as we wanted it. Let's put the arm back on. I want this clamp bolt to be right in that groove where it's supposed to be so it doesn't really sit easily with me hitting bolts like this but there we go that's more like it Use seventeens. Let's check there's no movement up and down there after you've tightened it to check that the axle was pushed up enough into the clamp before you did it up, and that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to unchock the wheel the other side now. Okay, so I'm going to put the steering arm back in place now. Just noticed the way, I thought it was weird that this rose joint wasn't turning and the way this uh, steering has actually been put back together before the rose joints are on angles so that when they're in place they stop each other turning which is not at all helpful so we'll, when, when we do the uh, the alignment in a minute or when I do the alignment in a minute I'll just adjust that thing The washers for the wheel and indeed the wheel bearings are exactly the same as the steering bearings. The washers are the same as, as go either side of the bearings in here. Countex also, bless them, they changed the thread of the nut. I don't know what thread it is, but the thread on this one is different to the thread on the other one, so uh, get a new nut. Now I said before that I wasn't sure whether the washers were in the right order uh, when I was talking about putting this back together. But they actually were in the right order in that the small washer goes first and then a the big washer goes on afterwards to protect, presumably to protect the wheel bearing from dirt.
And then there's another smaller one that goes on the outside after that. Let your wheel spins freely, which it does. Okay, now I'm going to take it off the axle stands. All right, time to look at the wheel alignment. For those of you chuckling about me worrying about wheel alignment on a tractor, I know, but uh, there's actually quite a substantial amount of toe out, which I think makes it really difficult to steer, so I'm going to set it up. So the steering wheel's straight. That wheel is going to be quite difficult to tell on camera. That one's pretty much pointing straight, maybe slightly slightly towing out. This one is substantially out. If you look down here, you can see this one's had a clout at some point on this steering arm. So while we're going to focus, so while I'm not going to change that one today, it's, it's substantially bent. So I'm going to set the alignment the best I can. These are the adjustment points down here. It's a, uh, 17 mil and a 13 mil to so hold the rose joint. So we'll just loosen those off and then see if we can get it a bit better. Do the same on the other side. So there aren't any flats on this steering arm to enable me to turn it. So assuming it's threaded correctly and I don't need to completely remove it to actually adjust then I'm going to see if I can turn it with a pair of grips and the answer is no I can't given that this is the side that needs most of the adjustment I'm going to take this side off okay so I've taken this side off as you can tell this piece is bent, so ideally we'd take that off and hammer it straight, although if you hammer it straight you might start with a load of metal fatigue and actually make matters worse, make it more um, prone to bending again. Notice on the new uh, part, this piece of metal is more than double the thickness. I mean this has got a strengthening fillet underneath, but not right to the edge. The, the new one is more than double th the thickness, so I think they probably acknowledge that it's a, it's a bit of a design fault. So this wheel was pointing too far out so we want it to turn in more so we need to screw this rose joint out maybe I'll give it two turns to start with and see how that looks So that's not bad. We measure to the outer edges of the wheels at the front, which we do it absolutely to the outer edge. So it's not an exact science, but that's measuring 940 millimeters at the front, 930 at the back. That means we've still got some toe out, which is not what we want. So I'm going to adjust this side a little bit now. Right, and this is where we find that that rose joint seems pretty tight. So if I tighten up the lock nut on the other side, hopefully that will be sufficient to allow this one to be loosened, but we will see. No, it's not. Right, okay, take the whole thing off, put it in a vise, do it that way then. Do it the hard way. So would you be surprised if I told you that the steering arm is bent? Quite difficult to show, but if I hold the steel rule against both sides, hopefully you get the idea. 
So, what to do about that? I think the best thing, or the, the only thing really to do, is uh, put it on a vice and hit this bit with a hammer to try and straighten it. It's not ideal because it's putting pressure on this, but if I unscrew this in the vice and then do it, I'm going to have to hammer onto the threaded area unless I find a, another suitable nut. So let's see how we get on. bit better. Alright, let's see if we can take this off now. Nope. We've already put some of this on but a bit more won't hurt. Of course, I didn't make a note of where I started, so we got a bit of adjustment on our hands here, but never mind. Ooh, lovely. So if you're doing this job, take a note of how many turns you put on that before you take it off, so you know that you can get yourself right about back to where you started when you're doing the wheel alignment adjustment. Bit of my favourite, in fact I'm going to just put loads of my favourite copper grease on here because I really don't want this seizing again. That's a pure guess, I think there's about right. Right, it actually needed a bit more adjustment than I did the first time but now we have a track width measurement of 935 across the front and 945 uh, across the back which is probably too much so I might just adjust that out half a turn on this side and then what I've also got is that the wheels aren't pointing straight when the steering wheel is straight still so then that's a case of adjusting this arm screwing this out slightly so that when the wheels straight the mower is pointing straight so that's a case of just tightening up the track rod end lock nuts before I do just making sure that the track rod ends rod ends are in the same orientation so that they can actually turn on the joints. That's not how they were before so the, the rod was tight. You can see now that rod can move and the final thing to do is to put this tensioning bar back in place Remove this to make jacking the tractor up a little bit easier. Twist those over like that to lock that pin in place. Now the last bit just to screw this out slightly so that the steering is centered.
Okay, you know where this is going, don't you? This arm needs to come off as well because it's all seized as well and it's also loose in there. Which I hadn't spotted before when I serviced it. I'm just wondering if I can actually get a spanner on there. Not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but that's wobbling on there. I think that play wasn't particularly apparent before because there was so much more play on the other end that it was kind of distracting me from, from this. Anyway, that needs a bit of tightening up. Okay, incredibly difficult to video what I was doing there. So I'm going to describe it to you afterwards instead. So I needed to take this arm off to free up the track rod end, which needed to be done in the vise. At the other end it was loose, so we undid, I undid, that bolt there, that bolt there. They're 14 millimeter. you can reach in underneath to hold them. I ended up using a socket on a breaker bar to do one and a spanner to do the other. So doing that enables this whole crescent piece here to be loose, which then enables you to get a spanner onto the underneath of this. To then to undo it to free up the track rod end and then tighten it up again. Only thing to be aware of when you're putting it back together is to make sure that you get this in the middle with the steering wheel centered otherwise you are just making another wheel alignment problem for yourself. So that's on there that's nice and tight now there's much less play in the steering there's still a little bit because I need to adjust, do, go back to what I was trying to do about an hour ago which was just to put a few more turns out on this joint here so that the wheels are pointing straight when the steering wheel is straight. Need to do this up each time because you can't really assess it when it's loose. Okay, finally, about uh, an hour later than planned, I've now got the steering all back together. It's all aligned as best as I can do in the garage. I'm now going to take it for a quick drive around the garden and see how it drives. Okay, so good news, we're all fixed, all finished. There's hardly any play in the steering now and when you steer straight it points straight and it's also a hell of a lot easier to steer because we don't have that metal on metal contact that we're fighting against. I hope this was helpful. If you like this sort of thing please consider subscribing so you get to hear about more videos as I publish them. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.